Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for your incredible support. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to stay updated. Now, let's delve into our story. Boom. Boom. The ground shook with massive explosions as ice and fire magic clashed. Before the protagonist stood a colossal dragon, the dungeon's most formidable boss. Despite being just a mage, he knew he was too weak to face such a beast alone. Even his strongest attacks couldn't scratch a scale off its body. Fear gripped him as the dragon's claw sent him flying, his staff slipping from his grasp. Damn it, I was supposed to be the greatest mage in the world, and now I might die here, he thought as he hit the ground hard, every bone in his body aching. Suddenly, footsteps approached. Looking up, he saw his teammates, Naomi and Richard. Naomi was his lover, and Richard, his best friend. But seeing Richard's hand around Naomi's waist left him stunned. He pushed aside his emotions and quickly pleaded for their help. However, they stood motionless, their expressions cold and indifferent. Naomi walked over and gently took the storage ring from his finger, remarking casually that she never expected him to actually pursue the Pisces amulet. Her words cut deep as she spoke of his kindness and how he had always been willing to give her everything she desired. Before he could respond, she swiftly removed the ring. Confusion and hurt overwhelmed him as he tried to make sense of her words. Why would she say such things? He reached out, attempting to stop her. But his world shattered when Naomi and Richard began to kiss intimately right before his eyes. The betrayal was too much to bear. This was all planned just to get rid of me. That's why they came. To send him off, they said. Lin Jichen couldn't believe his eyes. He had treated them like family, and yet they betrayed him. His life was slipping away as his heartbeat faded. Everything went blank. He thought he had died. But suddenly, his chest began to glow red, and the Pisces amulet slowly emerged. Bang! 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 Wake up! The sun's already up! That familiar and annoying alarm clock blared again. Instinctively, he slapped it off, rubbed his head, and opened his eyes. The room looked unfamiliar yet oddly familiar, as if it was his college dorm. Wasn't he just killed by the final boss? Quickly realizing his storage ring and all his elixirs and treasures were gone. The TV showed it was August 7th, 2040. Had he been reincarnated? Reincarnated to the day before the game's launch 10 years ago? Was this real? Lin Jichen calmed down quickly and tried to figure out how he had been reincarnated. Recalling a rumor from the game The Eight Wastelands, which said the ultimate artifact, the Pisces Amulet, could grant a chance of revival, he concluded it must have been the Pisces amulet that brought him back to life. But his joy at being reincarnated was quickly replaced by anger. Fortunately, he hadn't put the Pisces amulet in his storage ring. Otherwise, those two scumbags would have stolen it. With this chance to start over, he wasn't going to waste it. Putting on his clothes, he walked to the mirror. His reflection glinted with coldness. Before all this, he had just gone through the most tragic and desperate time of his life. The person Lin Jichen had loved for 10 years was having an affair with his most trusted friend. They even conspired to cheat him out of all his belongings, elixirs, and magical artifacts, eventually luring him into a death trap. Since fate had given him another chance, Lin Jichen vowed to make them experience the pain of betrayal and utter despair. Suddenly, his phone rang. The caller ID showed it was Crazy Girl. Lin Jichen couldn't help but smile as he answered. Crazy Girl, long time no see. On the other end, a lively and youthful voice replied, sounding a bit confused. She told him that they had just had hot pot together yesterday, but she seemed courageous in making the call. She said there was something important she had to tell him, and he needed to brace himself. Lin Jichen knew exactly what she wanted to say. The exact same day, 10 years ago, in his previous life, she called to tell him she saw Naomi kissing another guy. Not only did he not believe her, but they got into an argument and never spoke again. Hearing her voice again was a relief. He apologized to her. She remarked that he was acting strange today. He laughed it off casually. Then he heard a heavy object drop on the floor, probably a dumbbell. She sounded worried and insisted she wasn't joking. Just like before, she told him about Naomi and the other guy. Lin Jichen's reaction was calm, which made her even more anxious, insisting it wasn't a joke. He interrupted her, telling her he believed her but had something more important to share. Hearing his calm voice, she thought he might be on the brink of having some bad thoughts and tried to comfort him. However, he sat down in front of his computer and asked if she knew about the Game 8 Wastelands. 
Of course, she had heard of it. The advertisements were everywhere. Lin Jichen told her he planned to become a full-time player in that game. This was because he knew that right now, people didn't realize Eight Wastelands wasn't just a simple virtual game. It would soon become a global sensation and eventually merge with the real world in five years. No one knew exactly why, but it was certain that the abilities, artifacts, NPCs, and maps from the game would manifest in reality. The sooner one entered the game, the better the chances of gaining an advantage. From the other end of the line, her voice came again. Though surprised, she had heard about this game being developed by the most advanced cosmic level AI. Remembering Lin Jichen's achievements in other games, she believed he could also have a bright future in Eight Wastelands. Lin Jichen decided to move out of the dorm and rent a place to fully immerse himself in the game. She was happy to hear that he hadn't been feeling down and had found a new direction in life. Hearing this, she felt relieved. They chatted for a bit more, but then Lin Jichen suddenly thought of something and quickly asked her not to hang up. He had spent all his money on Naomi over the past few years and needed to buy equipment to play the game. He had no choice but to ask her to lend him some money. She got angry, scolding him for spending so much on an expensive birthday gift for Naomi just yesterday to show off. With a huff, she hung up the phone. The more Lin Jichen thought about it, the more frustrated he became. Why couldn't he have been reincarnated a day earlier? Suddenly, his phone rang again. It was a transfer notification and a voice message from her. She had sent him 10,000 yuan, saying it was her gym membership fee for several years. She warned Lin Jichen that if she couldn't go to the gym, she'd use him as her punching bag. He laughed and promised to pay her back. A few hours later, it was almost midnight. Lin Jichen lay on his bed, making final preparations. The end. The next second, the ring on his finger emitted a dazzling red light and, after a quick scan, bound him to it. Soon, he saw a window pop up, saying the global beta test of Eight Wastelands had begun. Lin Jichen found himself immersed in the virtual world once again. Ten years later, he was back at the place where the dream started. A palace appeared before his eyes. A beautiful woman, glowing with golden light, floated gracefully in the air. Everyone's eyes were glued to her, unable to look away. These people didn't know, but Lin Jichen did. This was the goddess, also the cosmic level AI, and this was the first stage of the game. It looked simple, but it had to be approached with caution. Players were whistling and making inappropriate comments, catcalling her, and asking her to come down. Lin Jichen rolled his eyes at their stupidity. The next moment, those disrespectful players were swiftly punished and thrown into a vortex. The others were clueless about what had happened, but he knew that any player who disrespected the goddess faced penalties, ranging from temporary confinement to permanent attribute reduction. He decided to approach her with sincerity. Lin Jichen stepped forward and cupped his hands in respect, and the goddess looked at him with a calm, approving expression. Mortal, you seem decent. Do you truly wish to embark on the path of cultivation? Without hesitation, he requested her to bestow a talent upon him. The next second, her fingertip pointed at him, and a golden light enveloped Lin Jichen. Lin Jichen remembered the useless talent he received in his previous life, which reduced item prices by 10%, a pointless perk. He wondered if he would get the same thing. However, he knew that an innate talent didn't determine everything. Even a bad start could be turned around with his knowledge of eight wastelands. A beam of light appeared behind him, and a window popped up in front of Lin Jichen. Innate talent acquired, defy fate. He was stunned. This talent was different from his previous life. It had three effects. First, every time he died, all his innate attributes would decrease by 10%. Second, upon breaking through to a new realm, all attribute rewards would be doubled. And third, each breakthrough would inevitably attract a tribulation. Failing to overcome it would result in the destruction of his soul. Lin Jichen was overjoyed. This talent was simply too overpowered. Although it came with its dangers, great opportunities always came with great risks. If he didn't have the resolve to face them, then his reincarnation would be in vain. The talent has been bestowed upon you. Now you need to select your appearance, the goddess told him. A window appeared, showing different hairstyles, similar to character creation in other online games. These basic models also had different attributes. Lin Jichen quickly browsed through them and found the one he wanted. I choose the one with the highest charisma value, Lin Jichen decided. Unlike his previous life, where he deliberately chose an unattractive look to mess around, he later learned that higher charisma and more attractive character appearances made it easier to gain NPC favor. 
Otherwise, quests would be harder, and building rapport would be challenging. Next, the goddess asked him to choose his birthplace. A scroll unfurled, revealing a map divided into four regions. Each of these states suited one of the mainstream professions in eight wastelands, mage, healer, sword cultivator, and body cultivator. Lin Jichen pondered for a moment before opening his personal information. Innate talent determined the upper limit for sword cultivators and body cultivators, while spirit determined the upper limit for mages and healers. The most important stat of them all, perception, was the key to learning rare and powerful skills, followed by charisma, but none of this mattered since all Lin Jichen's base stats were maxed out. After reviewing his stats, Lin Jichen felt a surge of determination. If he chose to be a mage again, he would quickly become the best in the world. However, the weaknesses of mages were also evident, they were very weak in solo fights. He had chosen to be a mage because of Naomi, but this time, he would live for himself. Lin Jichen chose Mushian as his birthplace, a land known for sword cultivators. This time, I will carve my own path, Lin Jichen resolved. As a golden light enveloped him, his body began to dissipate. The next second, he found himself in the new bee village of Musian province. The place was bustling with new players. Some were holding signs asking for help, others were already looking for girlfriends, and many were marveling at how realistic the world felt. The crowd was just as lively as he remembered. Soon, an old man appeared and everyone rushed toward him, clearly the quest-giving NPC. Some of the players decided on extravagant looks like Super Scion, Tomato Head, or Pumpkin Head. Lin Jichen was sure they would soon regret their decisions. It's none of my concern for now, Lin Jichen thought. Watching them, he decided not to follow the herd. Instead, he turned and walked in the opposite direction. It wasn't long before people realized the NPCs weren't responding to them or giving out any quests. A female voice called out from behind, asking him to wait. He turned to see a woman who introduced herself as Lady Kui, the owner of the village's tailor shop. She asked if he wanted to take on a quest. Every player around stared in disbelief, their mouths wide open. An NPC actively approached him. Some even thought he was an NPC because he was too handsome. Lady Kui quickly moved closer, mentioning that her husband had died five years ago, and she had been single ever since. She offered to help Lin Jichen if he found the quest too difficult. Was this the effect of having maxed out charisma? It seemed he could attract NPCs without even trying. If he wanted, he could build a relationship with this attractive widow. But the thought quickly vanished from his mind. Despite her enthusiasm, Lin Jichen politely declined, telling her he had important things to do that day and would definitely come back to take on a quest another day. She seemed a bit disappointed but didn't insist. However, the other players looked even more envious now. Lin Jichen needed to find a specific place in the newbie village. He soon located a blacksmith shop. As he approached, a player informed him that there was a blacksmith inside who didn't speak a word. Lin Jichen cupped his hands in thanks and told him he was just browsing. Inside, several players were trying to talk to the blacksmith, a burly man who was hammering away at an unformed weapon. Seeing no reaction from him, they gave up and left. The blacksmith muttered to himself, Why isn't this weapon taking shape today? Lin Jichen approached and looked at the furnace below. Without saying a word, he grabbed the bellows and began to pump. The flames roared to life, and the temperature soared. Lin Jichen knew this blacksmith was the key NPC in the newbie village. Yes, the temperature was too low. The fire wasn't strong enough, the blacksmith said, continuing to hammer the weapon. They didn't exchange any more words. He hammered, and Lin Jichen worked the bellows. The smoke cleared, and the blacksmith triumphantly held up the now-formed weapon. Finally, it's done, he exclaimed. He turned to thank Lin Jichen, explaining that his apprentice was away, and there was no one to help him maintain the fire. He then pointed to the weapons behind him. Choose one of these weapons. You can borrow it for a day, but you must return it afterward. While other new players might find this reward stingy, Lin Jichen knew the real benefits were yet to come. He picked a simple iron sword. The blacksmith laughed heartily and told him that if he could bring him ten pairs of venomous fangs from the bamboo snake within a day, he would give Lin Jichen a special opportunity. After accepting the quest, Lin Jichen left the blacksmith's shop. Seeing the weapon in his hand, other players were visibly surprised. Many asked Lin Jichen how he obtained the sword. He pointed to the shop and jokingly told them, The blacksmith is heartbroken. Just sing him a song to move his heart, and you can get a weapon too. Many believed him and rushed inside. 
starting to sing love songs to the blacksmith. Lin Jichen shook his head, laughing, and went on with his day. Meanwhile, the blacksmith trembled, muttering, Get the heck out of here! But most of the players thought it was part of the storyline. The next second, he swung his hammer, throwing everyone out. By that time, Lin Jichen had reached the bamboo forest. If one looked closely, green snakes could be seen coiled around some bamboo branches. One snake quickly lunged at him, but Lin Jichen casually struck it down with a combo, easily dealing with the first snake and earning three experience points. He continued to slay several more snakes, gathering various items as he went. Surprisingly, from his experience, the drop rate for equipment in eight wastelands was usually low, yet these low-level snakes were dropping quite a bit of gear. Could it be related to his maxed-out luck attribute? Regardless, Lin Jichen continued with his quest. After dealing with all the snakes he could see, he came across a stone tablet that read, Beware of the Snake Forest. Wiping the sweat from his forehead, he checked his loot. There were ten pairs of venomous fangs, over a hundred poison arrows, and some copper coins. Elated, Lin Jichen headed back to the new bee village to turn in the quest. He handed the ten pairs of fangs to the blacksmith. The blacksmith inspected them and nodded in satisfaction. Thank you, he said, then handed Lin Jichen a letter. This is the opportunity one promised. Holding the letter with the word, sword on it, Lin Jichen knew this was his ticket to joining the sword sect. He asked the blacksmith if anyone else had received the quest for the letter. The blacksmith told him that so far he was the only one. Satisfied, Lin Jichen realized he was ahead of the game while others were still exploring. Before heading to the sword sect, he had one more thing to do. He went to the bustling market of the new bee village and started selling some equipment. Come and see. Selling at a huge loss. Want to get stronger? Need equipment? The first blue snake bow in the server is up for auction. Highest bidder wins. Buy it so I can get married IRL. Soon, a crowd gathered around Lin Jichen. The bidding quickly reached 1,800. Suddenly, a girl's voice shouted, 50,000. Everyone turned to see a group of female players approaching. Ignoring everyone else, the woman walked up to Lin Jichen and said she could pay in cash or through an online transfer. Smiling, he considered her offer good when someone else bid 60,000. A man approached, introducing himself as Wang Jing Hao, the leader of the Millennium Guild. He had noticed Lin Jichen obtained equipment so early on and wanted to recruit him, thinking he was a big shot. Other players recognized the Millennium Guild as well. Lin Jichen greeted him politely, but he remembered in his previous life when he reached the top 10 on the Sky Leaderboard, they had approached him. He refused, causing Wang Jing how to hold a grudge ever since. He took Lin Jichen's advertisement seriously, thinking he was actually selling the weapon to get married, and even offered to cover all the wedding costs. Politely, Lin Jichen declined, thinking he should have thought of a better excuse. However, Wang Jing Hao didn't get angry and said he admired him. Just as he was about to take the bow and arrow from Lin Jichen's hand, the woman bid 70,000. Neither was willing to back down, and soon the price soared to 300,000. Lin Jichen wondered which guild the girl belonged to, as she showed no regard for Wang Jing Hao. Maybe he could use this to really put the squeeze on him. The girl soon raised her bid to 500,000. Wang Jing Hao, feeling pressured, tried to assert his identity with a hint of threat in his tone. The surrounding crowd was shocked that someone would spend 500,000 on low-level equipment. It's crazy how people pay to win nowadays. At the same time, some speculated that the girl had a powerful background. Unfazed, the girl responded that the highest bidder should win, and asked if Wang Jinghao thought he could monopolize everything he desired. His face turned sour. She looked down on him, knowing that compared to her young lady's family, the Millennium Guild was nothing. Feeling humiliated, Wang Jinghao decided not to buy the bow. Internally cursing encountering such a crazy woman, he didn't want to spend 500,000 on a newbie weapon. As he was about to leave, Lin Jichen called out, Brother Wang, please wait. Wang Jinghao turned, asking what else Lin Jichen wanted. Still quite angry, he looked at Lin Jichen impatiently. Lin Jichen sincerely told him that the Millennium Group had a big name, and if Wang Jinghao was willing to offer 500,000 on the spot, he would sell. In return, Lin Jichen wanted Wang Jinghao to look after him in the future. Hearing this, Wang Jinghao's face lit up, and he agreed on the spot. His gaze towards Lin Jichen changed slightly, and he burst into laughter, promising that he would help Lin Jichen if he ever faced difficulties. He immediately prepared to transfer the money. After receiving the money, Lin Jichen handed Wang Jinghao the bow, 
though he thought to himself, leaving a good impression now will make it easier to manipulate him later. Wang Jinghao, clearly in a much better mood, laughed heartily as he left. He threw in a sarcastic remark to the girl, telling her to remember not to go against the Millennium Group in the future. The girl was first surprised, then angry. Lin Jichen watched Wang Jinghao leave and chuckled to himself. Spending 500,000 on this piece of junk? What an idiot. The poison arrows were limited and would run out after a few uses. Suddenly, the girl turned and glared at Lin Jichen, clearly upset. How can you go back on your word? Didn't you say the highest bidder would win? She shouted, pointing at him and calling him an opportunist. She stormed off in a huff. Lin Jichen thought for a moment and decided he should find a way to make it up to them. Outside the new bee village in the boar forest, the group of girls was preparing to level up. They decided to split up, each aiming to kill two boars. Soon, the other four dashed off in different directions, and Lin Jichen appeared suddenly. What are you doing here? The girl asked him, clearly still upset. He didn't care. He simply wanted to talk with her. She took a deep breath, calmed down, and allowed him to speak. Little did Lin Jichen know, she suspected that he had just met Wang Jinghao and might have been tricked by the Millennium Guild. With this thought in mind, she put away her weapon, willing to give him another chance. Seeing her sheath her sword, Lin Jichen held up five fingers and told her that for 500,000, she could buy a top secret piece of information. This information could give her guild an edge over the others. She didn't immediately accept. Instead, she asked why Lin Jichen didn't sell such important information to Wang Jinghao and reminded him that he had asked Wang Jinghao to look after him. Hearing this, Lin Jichen waved dismissively. Does he deserve it? I'm just playing along with him, putting up with his nonsense, he said, acting as if he were in a pitiable situation. To Lin Jichen, the enemy of his enemy is his friend, and this girl seemed to dislike Wang Jinghao, so perhaps they could collaborate more in the future. She looked at Lin Jichen skeptically, his sudden change in attitude seeming too abrupt. He sent her his bank account number, assuring her that it would be a fair trade and that he wouldn't cheat her. She visibly struggled with her decision. In the end, she transferred the money to him. Eh, easiest million in my life, Lin Jichen thought to himself. Even though Lin Jichen knew real-life money would become worthless later, he still needed it now to improve his life. Once the transfer was complete, Lin Jichen told her she should head back and complete the blacksmith's shop quest instead. She was stunned for a moment, then got very angry and yelled at him. You can't get a quest from the blacksmith's shop. Unaware of her intentions, she was about to attack Lin Jichen, thinking he was sent by Wang Jinghao to scam them. He quickly explained that she needed to help the blacksmith pump the bellows for five minutes after he started forging to get the quest. She didn't say anything but still seemed skeptical. If you don't believe me, just have one of your subordinates try it out. But make sure to do it discreetly so other players don't find out. Otherwise, the information will lose its value, Lin Jichen advised quietly. He then took out the sect letter, which the girl immediately recognized. When he explained that this was a quest reward, he felt he had said all he needed to say. What she did next was up to her. As he turned to leave, she suddenly called out to him, still confused about why he would sell such important information to her. Lin Jichen smiled and said, I don't know, maybe because you're cute. She was stunned for a moment, then blushed, her gaze softening towards him. Suddenly, there was a commotion behind her. They both turned to see an enormous boar charging out of the forest. Is this a boss? The girls shouted as they ran. Instead of fleeing, Lin Jichen stepped in front of them and calmly said, You're in luck. This is the biggest boss in the newbie village. One of the girls asked in surprise if he intended to solo the Boar King. Lin Jichen smiled, extended his hand, and asked if he could borrow her sword. She tossed it to him, still skeptical of his abilities. Without saying much, he thanked her, drew the long sword, and ignored the chatter behind him. How is this possible? Isn't he just going to get himself killed? One of the girls remarked, half angry and half embarrassed. Another teased, right? He's probably just trying to impress Sister Ling by playing the hero. Ling scolded them to be quiet, but their laughter only grew louder. Just then, Lin Jichen leaped to dodge the Boar King's charge, slashing at its belly and then its head. To his surprise, neither attack did any damage. Maybe I need a new strategy, he thought. Quickly maneuvering to the Boar King's rear, he refrained from attacking and instead sprinted in the opposite direction. Watching from a distance, the girls chuckled at his desperate escape, commenting on how amusing his running looked. Ling sighed, 
This is all my fault for provoking him. At least he's a newbie. So dying a few times isn't a big deal. It's just a lesson. Lin Jichen soon reached a massive rock. As he neared the edge, he executed a 360-degree backflip, leaping over the Boar King. Unfortunately for the Boar King, it crashed headfirst into the rocks, breaking one of its thick tusks. A minus 50 floated above its head as the fallen rocks caused additional damage, Lin Jichen observed calmly. The girls were stunned, unaware such outcomes were possible. Despite the Boar King being dazed, Lin Jichen seized the opportunity to strike its forehead with another slash. Each hit dealt critical damage, albeit only 8 points. Gradually, the boss lost half its health. Recovering from its daze, the Boar King roared furiously and charged again. Lin Jichen dodged, relentless in his attacks. The pain drove the Boar King into a frenzy, wildly charging. Lin Jichen repeated his tactic of evading and striking, leading the Boar King to crash onto the rocks once more. Seizing the moment, he jumped onto its head and drove the iron sword downwards, piercing its skull completely. As the Boar King fell, a flicker of flame flew into Lin Jichen's body, granting him 70 experience points. Breakthrough! He exclaimed as he entered the early stage of chi refinement. His talent triggered, doubling all his attributes, followed by a warm surge that wiped away all fatigue. Entering the chi refinement stage marked Lin Jichen's path into cultivation, officially becoming a cultivator. His talent also granted him a new ability, the Blood Energy Seed, increasing his vitality by 10%, with potential for further upgrades. This was a significant boost, increasing his health substantially with his attributes already doubled. Suddenly, a notification window popped up. Ding! Congratulations on completing the first kill of the newbie village boss in 8 Wastelands. A global announcement will be made. Would you like to hide your name? Lin Jichen saw no reason to hide and chose not to do so. With his decision, an official global announcement echoed across the game, leaving everyone in disbelief. How could someone defeat the boss so swiftly? Many speculated he must be a prominent player from a major guild. The girls also saw the message and learned his name. While others discussed the announcement, Lin Jichen focused on inspecting the loot scattered on the ground. Thanks to Lin Jichen's maxed out luck, a plethora of gold coins, two weapons, and a movement technique book dropped. Despite his excitement, he didn't forget about the downside of his talent. With a recent breakthrough, his tribulation would arrive soon. The system notified him that the tribulation would descend in 30 minutes. Quickly gathering his loot as the sky darkened and clouds formed ominously overhead, Lin Jichen felt a bit worried. If he failed the tribulation, his attributes would permanently decrease. Realizing the urgency, he hurried towards the sword sect, hoping someone there could assist him. The girl abruptly stopped him, requesting to add him as a friend and suggesting she would buy all his future equipment. With little time to spare, Lin Jichen accepted her friend request and dashed off. She seemed annoyed, wondering why he was rushing. Did he find them scarier than the Boar King? Arriving swiftly at the sect, the dark clouds still looming, Lin Jichen knew he couldn't face the tribulation alone and sought someone strong to aid him. Standing at the gate, he shouted, disciple here seeking a teacher. Many NPCs, likely disciples of the sword sect, gathered around, noticing the sudden darkening of the sky and flashes of lightning. Suddenly, a brilliant light appeared, a woman floating in the air. She inquired about the situation, and everyone bowed to her. Quickly identifying the phenomenon as a tribulation, she speculated it was one of the elders' direct disciples making a breakthrough. The elders exchanged glances, uncertain of the disciple's identity. At that moment, Lin Jichen rushed forward with the sword sect letter in hand. A bolt of lightning struck nearby, catching the woman's attention. Holding up the letter, Lin Jichen asked for her help, knowing it was too early to face the tribulation alone. With a graceful wave of her hand, she enveloped him in a radiant glow. The lightning struck, but the glow formed a protective barrier that completely blocked its impact. After that single strike, the dark clouds quickly dissipated, and the sky cleared. Taking a deep breath, Lin Jichen saw the elders staring at him in astonishment. It was their first time witnessing a tribulation for someone at the early stage of chi refinement. To them, he appeared as a prodigy. Their shock soon turned into eager interest, and they rushed towards him, each vying to take him as their disciple. One female elder even grabbed his arm. Watching the elders compete for his attention, 
Lin Jichen forced himself to remain calm and composed, despite his excitement. Just as their arguments peaked, the girl who had assisted him spoke up. There's no need to fight. This new disciple will join under my guidance, she declared. Silence fell upon the crowd. It was the sect leader herself speaking. But the sect leader never accepts disciples, someone murmured. The girl approached Lin Jichen and asked if he would like to become her sole disciple and train in the inner hall. A window popped up, indicating that Lin Jichen had triggered the greatest opportunity of the Tianyan sect. Though incredulous, he accepted without hesitation and bowed deeply. It was incredible. He had just joined the sect and already found such a powerful mentor. They proceeded to the inner hall, the heart of the sect. His mentor instructed him to train there henceforth and assigned another sect disciple to bring him a newcomer's package and show him to his quarters. She departed, reminding him to meet her in the main hall the next day. While the girl appeared somewhat aloof, Lin Jichen had achieved his goal. After waiting for what seemed like an hour without any sign of the assigned disciple, he decided to explore the area alone, curious about any hidden quests he might stumble upon. Suddenly, he discovered a uniquely styled palace. Pushing open the door, he stepped inside. He gulped nervously, only to be startled by a demanding female voice asking, Who's there? It dawned on him that he had wandered into the girl's palace. He tried to apologize, but before he could finish, she struck him with a powerful blow that instantly depleted 90% of his health. She scolded him for trespassing without permission. Panicking, Lin Jichen quickly explained that the assigned disciple hadn't arrived, and he was simply trying to get acquainted with his surroundings when he accidentally entered. Rubbing his swollen cheek, he silently hoped this incident wouldn't affect her opinion of him. She sighed and decided not to punish him further. Instead, she handed him a pill and sternly warned him never to enter her palace without permission again. Examining the pill in his hand, Lin Jichen realized it was a high-grade pill that boosted all combat attributes by 30% for 5 minutes and restored 3,000 health out of combat. He decided to save it for later and returned to his original spot, soon hearing approaching footsteps. It was the disciple his mentor had sent, a young girl in blue robes. Junior brother, come and pay your respects to your senior sister, she said suddenly. Lin Jichen respectfully bowed to her. Greetings, senior sister. She was pleasantly surprised to see him playing along, and a system notification indicated that Nangong Yu's rapport had increased by 10 points. Lin Jichen complimented her, saying, Senior sister is not only as beautiful as a flower, but also possesses such high cultivation. I am in awe. Hearing this, she became even happier but blushed and turned her head shyly, trying to hide her face while calling him a smooth talker. There's a saying that to advance in cultivation, one must not only practice diligently but also master the art of flattery, Lin Jichen added, making her burst into laughter. Another system notification informed him that her rapport had increased by another five points. He hadn't expected her to be so easy to get along with. Building relationships with NPCs could lead to various quests and opportunities, depending on the rapport level. Typically, reaching a rapport level of 61 or above allowed physical contact with NPCs of the opposite gender, while 71 or above could potentially lead to deeper bonds. However, achieving this was no simple task. Many dedicated players had tried and failed in previous lives. Suddenly, Lin Jichen coughed up blood uncontrollably. Alarmed, Nangong Yu looked at him and asked when he had sustained such severe injuries. Recalling the earlier incident, Lin Jichen saw an opportunity to gain sympathy and potential benefits. He wiped the blood from his mouth and truthfully recounted what had happened. The girl realized that her delay had caused him to wander and get injured by the sect leader. She almost burst into tears, explaining that the sect leader had specifically instructed her but she had been too engrossed in reading a novel. Hastily, she took out a bottle of pills and handed it to Lin Jichen, apologizing profusely and blaming herself. He shook his head and insisted it was his fault for wandering without permission. Before Lin Jichen could finish speaking, the girl looked at him with admiration, surprised that he would speak up for her even after being injured. Her rapport for him increased by another five points. After their conversation, she generously handed him a green pendant. Lin Jichen examined it closely, it was a spiritual level equipment piece with defense plus 10, vitality plus 5, and the ability to regenerate 1% of mana per second out of combat. It also featured a special skill, a 0.5 second mana shield during combat. This jade pendant was top tier among spiritual level equipment. Laughing, 
She remarked, of course, as your senior sister, I have plenty of good things. She then prepared to escort Lin Jichen to his quarters. He marveled at how quickly he had acquired such treasures, but reminded himself to treat NPCs as if they had real emotions and feelings, a secret known only to him for now. They soon arrived at a spirit gathering array, an ideal place for meditation and cultivation where spiritual energy transformed into experience. Sensing the surrounding spiritual energy, she mentioned enviously that even her father's place only had a mystic level array. Lin Jichen was surprised to find such a high-level array in his living quarters. Typically, players would meditate offline or AFK here to gain experience, though this method was slow. Could it be that Lin Jichen's mentor had arranged this specifically for him? They talked for a few more minutes until the girl patted his shoulder and bid him farewell. Lin Jichen thanked her once again before beginning his meditation. Sitting in the spirit gathering array, he could feel the spiritual energy entering his body at a remarkable rate of 52 points per hour, thanks to his maxed out perception. This cultivation speed was dozens of times faster than that of an ordinary early stage chi refinement cultivator. It seemed he could level up in just a few hours. Lin Jichen decided to log off and meet his mentor tomorrow. Back in the real world, he checked his phone and saw that his account balance was now over a million, and he was just getting started. And with that, we conclude this chapter. I hope you enjoyed today's content. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button, let's aim for 200 likes on this video. Drop a comment below saying part 2, if you're excited for the next installment. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.